This hint book of crime crackers may contain spoilers, well, I mean, will contain spoilers and coarse language. If that doesn't bother you, then have fun watching and enjoying this hint book. Hi there, have you been sucked into the obscure gaming genre of Japanese dungeon crawlers? Or are you interested in MediaVision's history? Or perhaps you were looking at PS1 launch games? Oh, that doesn't matter. Do you happen to also not speak a lick of Japanese and want to play through Crime Crackers? Well, for all ten of you out there who want to play it, I've got the hint book for you. Something to at least get through stages faster without wasting your time due to the language barrier. Much like how I am wasting yours by prefacing this. I will say that some of these are direct answers to puzzles, because there's a few where you'll be absolutely destroyed if you don't know Japanese. All of these are listed in the description by a level basis. If the level isn't listed, that means it's very straightforward. I will warn you too, if you are playing through this, do not go too far ahead if you don't want to see spoilers. Now without further ado, I will begin. Crime Crackers is a game that plays like Doom, but it isn't Doom. Because of that, it can be a little unrefined, but it's good to know how it plays. The D-pad controls movement, with up being forward, down being back, left and right turning the player. L1 and L2 strafe left, and R1 and R2 strafe right. If you actually move at a 45 degree angle with the strafe and forward, you will move a lot faster than you would normally. This was a problem a lot of early 3D games had. Pressing both strafe buttons make you enter a defensive state, where you take less damage and most times bounce projectiles off of you. Mastering this move, it's very helpful to time it just right. Hitting the square button lets you enter shooting mode. You can move your cursor around with the D-pad. Does that mean you're immobile? Not entirely. You can still strafe and the further sides of the screen can rotate you. But your movement is still limited. Shoot with square, X cancels out, and circle lets you do a special attack. Mind you, you can only do a special attack if you have special attacks remaining. Also with guns, here's the rundown of characters. Amelia uses pistols and can rapidly fire when she attacks. She uses less ammo but does less damage. Doran uses bigger guns that fire much slower, and you'd need to mash the button to fire faster. They do more damage, but Doran eats more ammo. Amelia and Doran share the same ammo pool, so keep that in mind. Lisa uses a sword and she doesn't have ammo, but her attacks are very short range, so you'd have to get close to attack with her. To change characters, hit select, they go in order of Amelia, Doran, and Lisa before looping back to Amelia. Whoever is in the middle is the current leader and will take damage when fighting, but if an enemy hits you on the side, it will damage the characters on the side that was hit, so make sure you watch your knight in three. Hitting triangle brings up the menu, so now we can talk about menu controls. In the game menu, you have five options. Map is what you get for finding the map in stage one, or buying it. Map controls are straightforward, with the zoom and rotation options being the L and R buttons, panning being the D-pad, and exiting with X. Item is the menu filled with items you can use, such as health items, upgrades, and key cards to open doors. Equip lets you switch out your character's gear. You probably won't need this for another feature I'll talk about, but you can use it to swap out goods easily by selecting the ones you want. Save and load are easy to understand. You can save it any time you want and load it any time you want. If you want to abuse that, go ahead. However, boss rooms usually have a prompt telling you that you'll enter one, except for the last two stages, so it's best to save at those. Also, you can cancel the text by selecting the bottom option. Speaking of options, at the menu, when reloading a save, you have the ability to start at the beginning of the stage over the middle of the dungeon you're in. So if you want another shot, you can have one. If you don't want that, select the bottom option. Also, never hit square on this menu. That can delete your save. If you do, hit X to cancel. By the way, you can only access the store in between chapters, and you can only get gear that's the right cracker rank for you. If you want to increase your cracker rank, explore and kill as many people as you can. In stores as well, when you buy objects like weapons and armor, a second prompt comes up after purchasing them. This is a prompt to immediately make the character equip it. I always use it, but it's up to you. You can tell something is equipped if the name of the character is highlighted in yellow. Alright, let's do an item run through, go! 
Pills heal you 100 points. Box of pills heal your entire party 100 points. Med bag resurrects a player, or at least makes them conscious again. I don't really know what happens when they do that. Bigger med bag resurrects all players. Double pills heals 300 health. Sex topple pills. I don't know the limit, but they either fully heal you or heal very high. Green med bag resurrects at full health. Apple gives Amelia 30 plus health permanently. Meat gives Doran 30 plus health permanently. Milk gives Lisa 30 health permanently. Ammo belt, I, I think, increases your ammo capacity by 50 rounds. Ammo case refills your entire ammo supply. Um, cyan gas can, whatever that is, increases your special attack amount. Now that all of that's done, we're going to go through each stage specifically. Don't use the ID card just yet. Instead, go back a bit and find another door you can use it on. There you can find a hidden map module so you don't have to buy it. Remember what I said about defense too. You're really gonna need it when you're battling this guy. Just strafe, defend, and shoot him. Turrets will fire at you, but there's usually alternate paths around them. The first one you encounter leads you to a path to find the circle key. Use this key to help you find the star key. Then you can use both to fight the boss. This stage is huge, so explore what you can. After this stage, I would hope you're at D rank. If not, restarting isn't too hard, but you really need to explore for stage 3. If you are D rank, get the best armor and Doran's D rank gun. Trust me, if you have any spare cash, get revives and heals. Trust me again. Firstly, don't use any special moves, even on accident. This stage shows off gimmicks of help, I can't see shit, so they introduce balls that flash the entire screen. You're supposed to find power modulators that turn on the power so you don't have to use these. When you do find the power modulators, just hit circle to turn them on. You'll also find rank 1 and 2 doors, so look at the Roman numerals carefully. This boss is a fucking tough asshole too. The hardest in the game, I'd say. His grenades do a shitload of damage, even if you're D-rank and wearing D-rank armor. Try to move and fire at him with Doran's gun. You should have plenty of revives, ammo cases, and pills if you've been exploring. Yeah, this boss sucks my asshole, but it gets better from here on out. Wow, stage 4 was a cakewalk, huh? Anyway, you're collecting mushrooms here. Two of them are on the top floor, three of them on the bottom, leading to a total of five of them. When you have all five, use them to go to the boss. The boss is two enemies and can be pretty bullshit if you didn't refill on your health packs. But Doran and Lisa can both take them down if you have fully upgraded armor. Amelia will get destroyed though, so don't use her unless you absolutely have to. This level is fucking boring, but if you want to have a high cracker score, explore every nook and cranny to find the robots carrying fake crowns. After the first three, the crowns will be collected automatically. The boss is piss easy. Move right and fire at him. He telegraphs his attacks very obviously, so it's very hard to get hit by him. Nice alien reference. Anyway, this stage is small but has a small language barrier. You'll come across a hole you can interact with but can't do shit. You gotta turn the power off and then Korlog will fix it for you. Turn it on and you can open up the doors. Find the door with the ID card and the black market card while you're here. Next, view the ID card, which thankfully has the number written on it. At least the numbers aren't lost to language. Enter that to get the floppy disk. Use it on the computer that you turned on near the power, and then turn the power off because electricity is power. Yes. Boss is a little aggressive, so try to run away and strafe away from him. He telegraphs very obviously though, so you should be good there. Fun puzzle, you can only have red doors and blue doors open at a time. As you go through, it should be pretty straightforward, and you should end the first part at the red doors. The red and blue doors don't matter too much at the end aside from cracker point bonuses if you want to go for that. There's no boss too. Straightforward to a point. Basically you're in a maze. Read the signs here then open the door. Both green and purple floor tile rooms teleport you to the beginning if you hit an edge. And they both have one specific item for Lisa in them. But you'll only experience the first puzzle until the language barrier hits. After the first area, you'll be in a room where you have a puzzle and you have to read six hidden tiles in the stage. 
Basically, it asks, which ones don't include the word magic on them? Well, you can't find out if you're here. The answer is 2360. Yes, only three signs don't, so you add a zero at the end. The second teleportation is straightforward. Shoot all the demons. Try to stay somewhat closer to the edge so they pop in right at you. They play with your visibility in this area. You also only have 15 minutes, so make sure you rush quick. There's also no boss. Another language barrier thing. Alright, so explore the top level until you find three orange and blue pills. They'll come in handy later. Next, go through the bottom and top floors to find the button to unlock X doors. It's on the top floor and it's in a hallway that's very long. Once that's done, head over to the elevator that was blocked off by an X door before. Those pills, they make you immune to toxic gas. Have all three members take it. You can find another set here, near the start, and the Y door opener. Use that to help you get to the boss. Boss is piss easy. Stand in one place and guard when needed. You can just stack and take it. Galaxy Police Headquarters. Man, fuck this place. Anyway, you'll be stripped of your gear. First thing to do is talk to the damn walls. Yep, talk to the walls. Then Doran gets pissed and opens the door for you. Thanks, Doran. The alarm goes off, so first you have to find a way to disable that and then find your way up to the top floor. Once on this floor, you have to find your gear. Generally, stay away from the corners and four-way stops with enemies at them. Keep your distance and try to follow the path. If you see any arrows marked room, don't go to them just yet. If you see two arrows marked room pointing in the same direction, you're on the right track. Keep going to the left of those two rooms and you'll find a small room with your gear in it. Grab it and let loose exploring. If you want to leave, Continue going left from the room you got your gear in and go up. There's also no boss in this stage. So if you haven't noticed, this is stage two. Head over to the boss room and go down the elevator. Pretty straightforward stuff here. In this new area, keep following the plus sign until you're on the opposite side of the map. There, you can use the star or circle key to open a door below. There are tons of hidden paths here and there. When you see the Galaxy Police Chief, make sure you saved. You'll be running up to a piss easy boss. You can stay in the corner and just hit him. And yes, you will survive. Also pretty straightforward. There's not much to do here when it comes to gimmicks. There's going to be a spot where two elevators go down to what seems like a dead end. Well, it is. Take the other elevator that you may have missed on the floor above. The boss is two of the bosses from stage 10. Simple easy stuff, camp in the corner and troop it out like a champ. This one, this is an endurance test. Try to find all the hidden walls in this one. There's also a part that's not lit, which you need to use the light exploder things for. Use that in the dark room to find the toxic gas immunity pills if you don't have a spare set. Now on the bottom, there's a toxic gas place. Run through it and try to find gas masks. There's one right before the second door you find where you need a key card. The first being right at the entrance. If you find one, I would recommend giving it to Doran or Lisa first. If the toxic gas immunity pills wear out, just keep the masks. Don't bother reviving teammates unless you have spare pills, find an extra gas mask, or you're out of the toxic gas. Midway through this part, you fight that fucking ninja boss from stage 12 again. This boss fight is just as easy as the first one. Just make sure you block when they're attacking. Yeah, seriously, this thing can be a little rebel, that's for fucking sure. The next area has a bunch of hallways and electric walls leading to dead ends. There's a right path with a broken wall that you need to find, but I'd recommend going through them all so you get cracker point bonuses. At the end of the stage, there is no boss. This stage is a cakewalk. Just go straight and make sure you're stocked up on healing items. As you get further into the stage, you're eventually going to come to a point where it seems like there's multiple paths. Usually taking the furthest one away from you where you came in is the right option. This boss comes in without warning, so let me warn you. The boss for this stage is after a hallway of three manta ray enemies. Save right before teleporting just to be safe. The boss itself is completely immune to damage. 
The only way to damage whatever the hell it is, is to use the spray can from your inventory that you picked up at the end of stage 8. You use this to detoxify it, or whatever. But you can hit it, so slide left and right and shoot it. Ugh. Forewarning, pack up on gear. There's two bosses in this stage. Firstly, I hate this stage. What happens here is that you teleport to different areas around the map. There is a special teleporter that brings you to a secret sword that you can use as Liza. It seems to be around this spot on the map. The teleporter that makes you leave should be around here. Bosses are super easy, so do the usual tactics against the ninja one and the other ninja fights. And the final boss can be defeated easily, but can block projectiles. There you go though, that's Crime Crackers. Good stuff, and I like it a lot, and I hope you did too. Well if not, though, I'm sorry. I mean. But yeah, I'm glad that you were able to tune in, and if you ever needed any help, there it was. Hopefully, that should have helped you. If not, I'd be more than willing to answer any questions, but I doubt this game is going to be that complex to you. If you're here and you haven't seen my review of Crime Crackers, well, I would highly recommend it. Among some other videos, you know, <laughs> I was here patting your back, I think the least you could do is pat mine. 